Hey everyone, welcome back to Ontario Gardening. So today is a super exciting day. It is our very first garden tour of the season. I am gonna show you some cool stuff. It's very exciting and we also already have some garden fails and I'm gonna show you those as well. So coming along, we always start here to the dwarf apple trees in their containers, the video that started my YouTube channel. And they must have heard me talking about how if they don't produce anything this year, I was gonna throw them out because we actually have some apples this year. So I actually trimmed these up. I pruned them off really hardly um, before we put them out. And when I came out this year and they started to flower, I don't know if this helped or not, but I actually hand pollinated between the two trees because there is one over there on the other side of the patio. So I don't know if that made a difference at all. I don't know what's gonna become of these because we already look like we're starting to have um, what's called blat, black rot, I believe. It's a common um, disease in apple trees here in Ontario, and it kind of looks like we have some of that already. I'm going to keep an eye on it, but everyone say a prayer that we get some apples this year because it would be really exciting and worth the time and investment that I have put into these freaking trees. I was so angry with them last year, so here's to hoping. Moving along across the patio here. We've got our hosses, which are insanity, but I have strawberries. So this year, um, last year, I don't know if you remember, I did them in hanging baskets out in my pollinator garden. This year, I decided to use the tower garden. This was just from the Dollar Tree. They're stackable planters, and we're doing our strawberries in them this year. And I already have some growth, some bigger ones down here. I've been watering thoroughly because with these containers, these towers, they can get dry super quick. And I've been rotating them to kind of just get that extra sun on all of the plants and make sure nothing's shaded out. Our garden puppy got a new water toy today. Can I see this? Hello. <laughs> but anyways, so moving along, we have our carrots. And if you have followed us for any length of time or watched any of my tutorials, you know that I like to dig a garden trench and very heavily seed and then thin. And that's kind of where we're at here. I need to come in just a weed here. Has anybody else had extreme weed pressure this year? Because that's the garden fail number one is like the weeds in this bed are insanity. But anyways. We have to come through and we're going to thin all of those. That's a job for tomorrow. Um, this was a later, um, so we decided to paint the fence after we already planted the carrots and ended up stomping all over them and kind of had to replant. Here we have radishes and these are pretty much ready to harvest at this point. As you can see in there, we've got some radish goodness. I am actually going to take these all out and ferment them. I am going to show you that in a separate video on how to actually do ferments, but uh, we'll probably do that tomorrow as well. That's why they've been kind of sitting there and waiting to be harvested. And just to give you a span of what we're actually looking at, it's golden hour here, as you can see. Hopefully it's not too bright for you, but moving along from the radishes, I have last year I planted marigolds as trap crops and they did amazing but I planted the wrong ones. I believe I planted African. I didn't look on the back to see that they were gonna grow two to three feet, which they did. I ended up having to rip half of them out. This year I made sure to get the proper variety that was only gonna grow little like I wanted. And I actually put them all around the border, the front border of my bed. And hopefully that'll work great as a trap crop. I haven't seen the Japanese beetles yet, but I know they're coming. Next door, we have our asparagus. So I planted the crowns last year, so this year I did not harvest anything. Next year we can start harvesting. But yeah, they've gone, and I've had to make these little, I don't know if you can really see here, but I've had to put tomato stakes with some twine across it to hold them up so that they weren't falling over into the next bed. But yeah, I'm really excited for that. Now I did try to utilize every inch of garden space that I could and plant green onions, excuse me, in between the beds and I do have green onion germination down here um, I just don't know how well it's gonna do so I do have another spot in the garden that I could interplant some green onion with just to get a crop this year but 
I don't know if it's going to do well in there. We're going to experiment and try it out. Next bed is our peppers. <laughs> wow, what a fail with peppers this year. Germinating in the house. I have a greenhouse inside. I'm sure you've seen in previous videos. Um, my focus this year, this entire bed was supposed to be peppers. I wanted to really focus on growing all different sorts of peppers and learning how to preserve them properly. And out of 18 different varieties, only nine plants germinated. <laughs> so that really sucked. I don't really know what was going on. I had an issue with my Pro Mix this year and I am very, very for Pro Mix. I've always used it in the past. This year, not only did it have a weird smell when I opened the bag, everything just wasn't germinating the way that it used to. It's not absorbing the water anymore. I feel like the water is just like sitting on top of the soil. I don't know. I wasn't impressed with it. I don't know if I'll be using that to start or do anything with next year, but this is what we got for peppers. I'm going to roll with it. Preserve, I'm going to preserve some up this year again, but we'll have to go to my local farmer's market and uh, get them there. But I've got a bunch of different varieties, as you can see. Moving along, I planted, so I just kind of had to make use of this bed. I didn't have plans for this bed, so I planted some onions, which I didn't plan on doing, but here we are, so I am excited for those. And next door, I have got some peas, and this year I am stepping away. If you look at my video where I talk about the top five um, vegetables to grow and ones I won't grow again, Peas are on that list, but shelling peas. So the ones that you have to open up and you get a couple little peas per pod. These ones are actually the edible snow peas. So you eat the entire thing inside and out. So you can put them in stir fries or just eat them, you know, by themselves. A little bit of a spotty germination, so I'm not loving that, but I will come back and replant. There's actually a couple things in here, and that's another garden fail we've had. The gar you know, so talking about weeds was number one, not getting proper germination for stuff was number two. And then, yeah, seeds just start like direct sowing seeds was number three is some of the really spotty. Now I did do a huge um, seed haul. I got a bunch of seeds for next to nothing and they were all Mackenzie seeds. So it's possible that they were a little bit older or um, the seeds weren't viable. Lesson learned, but I am going to come and I am going to um, replant in that spot here. So I had a little bit of my hog panel left over, so I just used a bamboo stick and laid the hog panel kind of on an um, angle up vertically. And I am going to try growing, these are cantaloupes. So this one, this variety is here. I am seeing that this one is actually doing a little bit better than this one and that's why I've kind of left this one to see, make sure I had a good strong plant to go up this trellis. So super excited for those. Here I have my cucumbers. I have rosemary kind of interplanted in between, but my cucumbers. So a couple videos back, I talked about how I was going to do a direct sow challenge. What And that basically is direct sowing a seed versus starting seeds inside and what that looked like. So here is a an example, number one, of starting inside versus direct sowing in the ground. That's a cucumber that I have started inside about three weeks before we came outside. And this is one I direct planted about a week and a half, two weeks ago. So that is the difference. This is actually two plants. I'm waiting just to make sure that uh, we have a really good strong one and then I'm gonna pluck the other one. But just for reference, that is the difference. I've got a couple of my sewing jugs left over. I've just been picking off of here. Okay, garden fail, <laughs> big time garden fail. So I have made another trellis here, two T-posts and there's the hog panel in between because my plan was to grow squash on one side, the honey nut squash, which is a smaller version of the butternut squash, it's like a more personalized version and a sweeter version on one side and on the other side of it I was going to grow loofah. Now I got the loofah to germinate beautifully inside of my greenhouse. Everything was great. The problem was, is it was trellising all over the place in the greenhouse, all inside, and it attached itself to everything. So when I went to go take it out, I kind of had to rip like on the tendrils a little bit and the plant pretty much died. As you can see, it's pretty dead. It's trying to start new growth there um, and a little bit here, but quite honestly, this is not enough to, to sustain for an entire season. Lufa takes so long to grow. 
So there is no way that this is going to bounce back enough to actually produce anything. So I, it's a little too late to start seeds for most fruits and stuff in my area now. I'm going to go to the greenhouse later this week and I'm going to pick up a pre-started plant. I think I want to try like a mini watermelon on the other side of that. So super excited for that. Really sucks about the loofah because I was really, really looking forward to that, making soaps and dish sponges for that. But it is what it is. We will try again next year. I couldn't find anybody in my area that had um, any pre-started plants for me. So it's okay. Moving along. We'll do what we can with this trellis. But yes, here's down here on each side I have the honey nut squash. And then moving along here, we've got our tomatoes. So I have um, Paul Robeson. I've got a super sweet 100, which is like a little cherry tomato. It's yellow. It's apparently one of the sweetest and best cherry tomatoes that are out there. So I've got that one. And then over here I have a black crim and a brandy wine, which are a little bit stunted in comparison to those two. And that's why I planted them here closer to like where the sun comes in and whatnot. Um, I'm not really sure why. I guess it could just be the variety of the tomato. It is what it is. But uh, yeah, those are my four tomatoes that I'm growing on trellises, just like last year. So last year, if you go back to my videos, I had the trellises set up this way and grew like a tomato on each side. And this one, this year, I decided to grow them kind of against the fence and save a little bit of space. And I planted beans in front of them. Now, <laughs> these are MI Gardener. We've got the Blue Lake Bush Beans. Apparently these are amazing. Haven't tried them yet. First year, excited for these. In the middle, they were um, pole beans again. Sorry, bush beans again. And they were the yellow ones. Pe yellow pencil pot, I believe. Didn't really germinate. I think I have like three plants. And then over here, we have old trusty. These are actually our own seeds that we save. They are the Lewis green beans. I believe I got them from Vesti Seeds. One of the best beans we've ever had. Most prolific, produce a lot. I usually get two to three different, no, I usually get two harvests out of those to eat or preserve. And then the third harvest I save on the plant and that's what I save my seeds from. If you don't know, um, if you let your beans go until they turn like brown on the bush, then you can save those seeds and replant them next year. So these are all completely ours from next from last year. So we are going to have to, unfortunately, either plant some more of these and move them over. But I was really looking forward to the yellow bean this year. So I think I'm going to have to, while we're at that nursery getting um, our plant starts, then I'm going to have to get some more beans. So I actually got this. I don't know if you can see it. My name is Amanda, if you didn't know. And uh, I got this really cute gift for Christmas. It came silver, but I spray painted it pink. I'm hoping that the pink will pop off of the green plants as it comes up. But because so far it kind of blends in and it's not really popping. If worst case scenario, that doesn't work, I think I will spray paint it white. I don't know. Thoughts? Put them down in the comments. You never know. Maybe somebody has a better idea than me. And then this is completely um, squashes. So this bed, I've got my Black Beauty green zucchini. I grow that every year, old trusty. I have got yellow zucchini in the next row. Um, I wanna say it's called golden yellow. I'm super excited for that because I actually just learned over the last year or two that the yellow zucchini taste better inside of your like breads and muffins and stuff because apparently it's a little bit lighter and sweeter so i definitely i'm gonna do a side by side i'm gonna make a loaf with that with the green and a loaf with the yellow and i'm gonna try it and then these two are patty pan squashes if you don't know what it is do a quick google i tried them last year they're just like little baseball sized squashes i cut them in half and throw them on the barbecue they are so good i can't believe i just i went to a local farmer's market last year and they had them and i was like oh i'm kind of you know asked for a suggestion on how to use them she told me and they were so good that i'm growing my own now and i don't know if i'll ever go without growing them again because what a summer treat and then we've got our pollinator garden which i don't really have to go through there's nothing overly exciting i'm kind of focusing this on not only pretty things but i've got the entire front is calendula and we are going to use that to make like um, topical ointments. It's uh, got some really good properties, similar to like a polysporin. So we are going to do that this year. I've got a couple of like delphiniums. My blueberry bushes back there are starting to make a comeback. We really screwed up last year and put sunflowers in this bed, which like sucked everything from the soil. 
I put um, chamomile seeds down here. It doesn't look like anything is germinated. I'm going to try planting again. And if not, oh well, because I've got some dahlias and some zinnias kind of interplanted in here. And those will get big and take over the area anyway. So it doesn't really matter. But let's go on over to my felt bags. So beside this rickety shed that needs to get redone, we have Aunt Molly's ground cherry. If you don't know what a ground cherry is, I suggest you look it up. It's supposed to be little pieces of um, what they call garden candy. It's really sweet. You can use it for jams and pies and whatnot. It's really cool. I'll show you like as we go through our garden tours, obviously you're going to see it. They grow in these little paper husks and when they're ready, they fall to the ground. And that's how you know when they're ready to eat. Now, my one concern is having dogs and all that having them fall to the ground. So I was going to try as this plant gets bigger to create some sort of like netting contraption or something underneath that will actually catch the little husks for me. If you have any suggestions, please leave them down below because um, I'm not really finding anybody grows this very often in my area and they don't really have a way without them just letting them grow to the ground. I guess if I had them like in the bed, it wouldn't have been such a big deal, but because we're like out of the bed in a container um, and on the ground, it's a little bit more of a bigger deal for me. Now, another garden fail <laughs> is the direct sow challenge. So as you can see, the direct sow challenge worked with like things like the cucumber. I forgot to tell you over there, this was another direct sow uh, experiment. So that was a zucchini started in the house prior to according to package, and this was direct sown into the ground. So in terms of like the plant actually going and thriving, not much of a difference. The difference is like that one has a ton more leaves than this one does, but overall, if you didn't have the time or a greenhouse or any way to start seeds inside, like that is just as perfect as that one in my opinion. We'll see as we go on how they grow, but yeah, not a significant difference for these ones. But going back to those felt bags, I direct sewed natapeno peppers and a tomato inside that bag. And I made sure to stick to the same varieties that are actually over in the beds. This way I knew that they were good seeds. They were seeds that were gonna germinate. They did germinate. There's the peppers. <laughs> like, and I just seen this morning they just overnight sprouted the tomatoes. So with that being shown, there is absolutely no way that in my area, I have a season that's going to be long enough to grow those to where they need to be. Like just from here, you can see the peppers or sorry, the tomatoes. Like they're <laughs> no, it's not gonna happen, unfortunately. I tried. It is what it is. I know now that I have to, have to, in my area, start tomatoes inside the house six to eight weeks, like recommended, um, in order to get a harvest. Because if I let this go, there's no way that that's gonna, there's no way it's gonna produce anything by the time I need it to. So these two bags are free game. I am going to, when I'm at the nursery looking for something to put on that other trellis, I am going to find something to put in these two bags. I'm thinking another fruit or something. I don't really know. I'm going to see what they have. We never know. Like it's a little bit late now, so you never know. Over here on the deck box, I have been growing um, pet grass. It's for you. Uh, it's, I don't know if you've ever seen the package at your local store. It's grass that you grow that your pets are allowed to eat. It's like safe for guinea pigs and cats, dogs, whatever. <laughs> so a little bit of a fail here. I didn't realize that one seed equaled like one blade of grass. So I like very sparsely put all these seeds. So as you can see, they very sparsely germinated. So what I need to do, I'm going to let these have its day. I'm going to let the dog have it. And then I'm going to do a really, really heavy sow for the next round. It germinates in like three days. It's supposed to be ready in 10 for them to eat. So I'll be doing this all summer. Same with the radishes. All summer, keep making new ones. And just another couple of things to show you. I mean, this isn't food related, so it's really not that big of a deal. But this year we did end up putting, like I said we were going to do last year, a small little garden around our pool area here we just have like a small little above ground pool so i got some dahlias my neighbor gave us some grass from her yard and my mother-in-law gave us some hosta for her yard so 
I'm all we really had to do I just lifted the grass off we put in a little bit of topsoil and some mulch just to keep it on the cheap I think this garden all in all cost us 10 bucks and we did this um, all the way around the other side as well we did stop here because we have access to like the pump and whatnot but the last thing to show you is that herb wall so the herb wall actually now that the pool is up and running I can show you in that video that I showed you of that space so do you see what I mean how there is like a wasted space over there that literally nobody can see so that's where I made my herb wall that I showed you in that tutorial so let's go over and take a look so I never did find a sign that I liked anywhere so I am going to actually just hand paint one it's probably gonna look super shoddy but I don't really care hello so this is what I meant by me not planting <laughs> of me only like stopping my herb wall here and not continuing on because the minute this lettuce starts growing down here I guarantee you this one's gonna have a snack but I made my lettuce ladder this year so we've got some iceberg lettuce so I just planted like an iceberg lettuce to grow big at the top then we've got these little gem lettuces that my friend gave me super excited for those and then a couple of different leaf lettuces red leaf lettuces and then these are all different herbs and we do have some germination now I'm gonna have to come out obviously and thin them but this is like lemon basil for example some of them are really tiny like I don't even know if you can see in there that we have like this little tiny oregano but yeah we have germination some of them did not germinate but I'm gonna give them a little bit of time and if not, I will replant, but yeah, that's super exciting for this herb wall. I want, I can't wait to see how I hope this turns out. This is like something I really hope does turn out. And that is it for our first garden tour. This one is going to be the most lengthy in time just because I am explaining to everybody what's going on. But yeah, follow me in about four weeks in July when I do my second garden tour and we see where everything's at, what I've added, on those places that things didn't germinate and uh, see where we're at. We'll talk to you later. Bye.